There's a workflow scenario that I was really hoping for on this current range of MPCs, but sadly it just doesn't seem to be possible in Logic Pro. I'm starting to think there may be a constraint on AU plugins that restricts a device from communicating beyond the plugin, but I'm not certain of that, it's just a theory, because it certainly appears that way. But the good news is, if you're using the VST plugin in something like Ableton, this magical workflow is right under your nose. And for those poor beggars like me in Logic Pro, we could use a straightforward yet undesirable workaround using Rewire to sync Ableton to Logic Pro to get our hands on this particular workflow. But in an attempt to get some clarity on this issue, I've reached out to Akai several times over the past couple of years and never received a response, which is disappointing because this scenario really does give the MPC a 360 degree versatile workflow. So in this clip, I'll show you how to set it up in Ableton. And if you find this helpful, like, subscribe and post any comments or insight you have on AU plugins or this particular workflow because there's a few of us that would really appreciate the additional insight. In a nutshell, we can use our MPCs in controller mode in conjunction with the MPC software as a plugin inside Ableton, but in such a way that allows us to tap the pads on the MPC and trigger just about anything inside Ableton, like a drum rack or synth plugin, but also amazingly, your external MIDI devices too, which is very cool. Now, some may ask, why would I want to do that? And simply put, I like the MPC swing, I like the note repeat feature, I like the arpeggiator, and some of you I've already spoken to really want to use the MPC's chord and pad performance features. And those features are generally only available to your external MIDI gear if your MPC is in standalone mode. But with this workflow, I can use those features in controller mode and designate them to anything I have access to via Ableton. In this clip, I'm using MPC software 2.9.1 and Ableton Live 11, but I've also tested this on Ableton 10. That said, enough yapping, let's get into it. First of all, you should have your MPC in controller mode and your MPC software installed and set up in Ableton. If you haven't already done that, then check out my video on how to set up Ableton Live and the MPC2 software. You can find the link in the description area below. Once you've done that, it's fairly quick and simple. Just make sure you have a MIDI track loaded with the MPC plugin on it. Next, what we do is either create a new track or locate a track you intend to trigger from your MPC. Then locate the MIDI from menu on that particular track. Select one dash MPC. Then from the menu below that, you want to select the MPC option again. And if this is a new or blank track you intend to use, just make sure you have some sort of instrument plugin like a soft synth or drum rack loaded onto it, which will help you if you're following along with this example. Next, we can head over to the MPC. From the main screen, select a MIDI track. Now go into your MIDI port option and select DAW. And that's it, you're done. Now you should be able to play or record the pads into the MPC's internal sequencer, or you can record the pads being tapped straight into Ableton clips or the arrangement timeline. The funny thing is, you could potentially record on both the MPC sequencer and into Ableton clips at the same time. But if you do that, your notes will probably flam or phase during playback. But the good thing is, you can use quantizers from either or both. Plus, you can use the swing, the note repeat, the arpeggiator inside your MPC to trigger internal Ableton sounds or even your external devices connected to Ableton. The downside I found is that you can only utilize one active DAW MIDI port at a time. Meaning if you try to use the DAW port simultaneously across multiple tracks from your MPC, you may end up triggering multiple Ableton tracks at the same time. This is particularly noticeable when multiple Ableton tracks have their input monitors on. So what I suggest you do there is either mute or disable your MPC's DAW MIDI port 
by going back to the MIDI port option and select None. This way, if you record your MPC parts track by track, one at a time, you can record as many as you want. So I still believe the benefits outweigh that particular downside. Anyway, that's all for this tip clip. I hope that's helped you out. If so, give the clip a big thumbs up and tag anyone that might want to know about it. Feel free to follow the channel and check out the links below for the Tone Lab Facebook and Instagram pages. But also, more importantly, check out the other videos on all kinds of other classic keyboards, drum machines and samplers, along with their tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, take care and bye for now.